Hello, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're here, my name is Emmanuel. In today's video, we'll be starting with two basic widgets, which is frame and label, as you must have seen from the description from the thumbnail. Before we take a step into the tutorial, make sure you smash the like button, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. Now, let's get into the video. Welcome back guys. First, let's have a look at the root window. The root window is generally regarded as a top level window because of how it works. The borders, the window bar, it contains other widgets and ties to. And also being able to house other widgets without a parent. So that's why that's what we usually call it a top level widget. Now we're gonna do from remember I promised in the last video, I think our first video, I'm not gonna be doing from like that. Import everything. No, I didn't actually promise, but we're gonna be doing I'm not going to be using that. Okay, for best practices, so we're gonna do it from thinking that import TK. So, if you ever wish, you need to use thinking that we're gonna do TK dot so we know where we are getting what we are using from. So, you don't just see me writing something and assume it's from Python when I'm actually using it from the star import everything. And I don't want that to happen because I want you to actually know how it works simplified. So, we're gonna do from thinking that import TK and I'm gonna come in now. The root window, as I said, how do you create the root window? You can, of course, you can name it anything. Then from tk, we're gonna do tk dot tk. So we are creating this is it here. We are creating an object as you can see it doesn't inherit anything. So if I come to the next line here, root domain loop. Now this is if I run it down as you can see. Oh my, what's what is what was that? I can't believe I made that mistake. So this is from import. Oh my goodness, import tk as tk. Okay. Oh my goodness, how did that even happen? So importing it as sticky. That's it. We're importing it as sticky so you can make use of it in a shorter way. Oh my goodness. How did I make that mistake? So if I run the country B, as you can see, we have this. This is what a top level widget looks like. Doesn't enter it. Does this title and other stuff. So we're gonna do you also we want to set the title. Let me just say cook bonus. That's not what this video is for. We're gonna say root the title. Then we're gonna I, I should probably create a video on root window. So I might put add that to the content table but anyway we're gonna do hello world so if i do control b now you can see it's not a title that's the title now why did i talk about why am i talking about this switch window you're probably wondering that's not even what is in there okay frame is also similar to a top level widget because it has its other widget as well but it isn't a top level widget because it inherits from appearance it inherits the appearance usually the root window it's or maybe uh, under other frame under frame it must have a parent widget for it to work at all or else we won't be able to use a frame now we'll take a look at the few things we can do with the frame widget since the frame widget has other widgets we can use a width and height parameter with it you can use width and height parameters with it now so we create a frame so i'm going to call this base frame and i'm going to say tk dot frame but i'm going to be using ttk so anytime i can use ttk i'm going to use ttk uh, except i can use tk for some other things you can use except i can't use ttk then i'm going to use tk so i'm going to do ttk the frame and then you have to inherit so i'm not going to inherit and i'm going to do base frame dot pack okay so we're just going to be using either the pack or the grid geometry managers here we're not going to go deep into it okay so this is more about widgets basic widgets then when we get geometry management we'll start building some basic things and arranging it with our geometry managers so if i do this and run it it's not it's not gonna work but i'm gonna show you something remember i told you you can add width and height to it so how do you add it you can add it in different ways you can do width is equals to let's give it 200 height is equals to 200 now before i if i run it, it's important to know that you should always inherit from root whenever you're using your frame our advice you always inherit from root it's gonna show but you're gonna you're gonna most likely have issues with it because you definitely have issues with it when it comes to building an app so but if running it now it will show on our window so if i run it control b it will definitely show but it's not actually gonna it's not responsive as you can see the width and height are showing for example if i clear it it doesn't show like i did before it doesn't okay i cleared it wrong so if i do this here as you can see it doesn't show you but if i add the width and height the width and height shows but well, i advise you always your root or else your frame you're just gonna be a mess okay now that's add you add width and height but i can only add this under way so i'm gonna control x oh so i have to go back to this yeah control x root so now we are inheriting from root properly the proper way then we're gonna come here 
now we can either do it inside the event you can configure it inside here most times you use this base frame dot config this option whenever I maybe i click on something and you want to just change something whenever i click on it of course you won't be doing that with a frame actually but with the config you can either use config or configure to configure your widgets so if i come and i paste this here as well it's gonna work ctrl b see that works i can change it to configure as well i just wanted to show you that okay so if you type i don't want to just put configurations and make this too long you can just put configure here yeah, so you know all your configurations are in here which is cool i would say you don't have to put everything in here now you know how that works so we, the pack now you're wondering why i can't use the pack you must have seen it in other videos if you check some other videos so if you use the pack here okay let me do this it's gonna work let me put the width and here. even if you have the width okay if I put it with an IT, it's gonna work. But the thing here is we're using the, the package because we are gonna be using our free widget somewhere else in our code. We are gonna be in here. It's gonna be other which are other widgets are gonna be in everything from this frame widget, this frame. So if I do the pack here, this the pack is gonna return in non type to this. So which means I cannot use the non type to configure. That's why I'm actually pack using it here. But if it's that if this is something like a label where you just wanna put it there static just on its own, then you can just do it this way. Of course, my never need to put it in a variable. So if I run this now, you see it says non type object has no attribute configure. Okay, that's because we use the dot pack here. So in case you come across that error, don't ever use it here, except for from the cases I mentioned earlier. You know the control Z. Okay, back to that. Now we've seen the width and height. Now let's talk about borders. So using borders with a frame object is also possible. If you are from HTML CSS, you're actually already thinking of different border you have. Anyway, let's have a look at using borders. To use a border, you can you have to specify the border width and the relief. Actually, you have a flat border by default. So border width is used to change the size of the border in numbers. While relief is used to change the border type. So either we have we have sunken, we have um, flat, which is default. We have this groove, we have raised ridge, and um, the last one solid. Okay, solid. Yeah. Now let, let me show you that so i'm gonna be doing everything i do in the config here you can put it in there you can you can do whatever way you want just depend on how you are coding so let me tell you something whenever you're building like this you want to be consistent with it so everything you're doing must be configure 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 or if you want to put that in here you can put it in here which will um, def definitely reduce the number of lines you write so i'm going to cut this number of lines of code you write so i'm going to paste this here okay so now border i'm gonna come here and then i'm gonna say border width let's change that to 10. now what's whenever the border type is really called is called relief so if you want to specify a border type let me just that a little so if you want to specify the border type use relief now let's change the default is flat so i'm not I'm, let's leave it for now so we see what the default looks like if i run the control b now you see we can't really see anything but it's actually there you can't see it now i'm gonna come back here ctrl z and then i'm gonna put change this to solid now if i do solid okay so that's more than 79 characters it's engaged against the pep guideline so i'm gonna expand this to the next line i'm gonna come here now reason why i'm doing this is so even when i'm writing code i'm gonna try as much as possible to follow best practices so if you're learning from me at least you're learning best practices subconsciously which will make you right we usually want to span to the next line whenever you have more than some of my characters and you should always really learn to write good code okay quality code now relief solid let's run that control b now if i as you can already see, already see the difference you see this is it with a height of 200 this is the square and we just change it to groove i'm just gonna try each and every one of them we have groove this is what groove looks like so i'm gonna put them up on the screen you can try each of them i'm not gonna try each of them so i don't waste time so as I've mentioned earlier, just the sunken groove, raised, ridge, and solid. You see it on the screen and description below as well. Now, if you want to specify a background color, we we'll have to change styles instead of just passing it as a parameter as we have in frame here. No matter, you can if it was sticky now, you can just pass your background color for your frame in here, and it's gonna work. But since it's sticky, you have to start dealing with styles, which is something else. If you check the content table in the first video, it's actually we're gonna talk about that later. So I'm not gonna I'm not going to talking about that now. So if I'm I'm gonna talk about that when I want to, when I'm gonna talk about it. Now if I change to TK, I hope you understand what I just said here. Yeah, I don't want to talk about styles now because I'm gonna talking about it later. 
So if I go change to TK and run it, it's still gonna work. So as you can see the border, see what groove looks like here in here. Now I can put a background here. Background and change it to yellow. If I run it, see we have a background of yellow. What if I change it to TK? Now you see we have this unknown option. So you see that's one of the difference between TK and TTK. Okay, so TK, TTK wants you to utilize the styles, so you can just change styles and stuff like that. So, but if you don't want to use styles and you just want to use TK for your frame, you are good to go. But I think you must have seen the difference. Let me clear this. You see what the groove looks like in here, and you see what the groove looks like in TK. You see, there's a difference, a clear difference. That is just really big. Now, that's it for frames, styles, and that topic for another day. Now the label widget, label widget is a widget we use for either displaying text or pictures, surprised pictures, yeah. Let's have a look. To display text, you just have to instantiate the widget as usual, passing in an argument, the parent argument to it. Now a label has a few options we can use, use of, make use of. Let me come here. So we have our base frame up there. Before we move into that, let me show you how to add padding around the widget around the label and inside the label container itself so we're going to call this hello label then we're going to say t tk the label then we're going to hear it from our base frame instead of root now so it's going to be inside our base frame you get the reason why we have a frame now now so we're going to do that base level base frame and then text so when you do text let's give it hello there or hello world if that's what you want so i'm gonna try on that i'm gonna do a pack here if i run that now it says inside our label but if i change this to root it's actual it's outside it we just beneath it so no, no difference now so we're gonna clear this because i'm still gonna be configuring some things now anything that has to do with configuring how the widgets looks like on your what the widgets around like i'm talking about the surroundings of the widgets on your app you're gonna be doing that in the your grid manager so let me show what i mean so if i do hello label dot if i'm using a pack since i'm gonna be adding a padding in or inside or outside my label widget i'm gonna be doing that in here well i can also use padding but not sort of padding configuration in here let me show what that is if i want to add padding i'm gonna do pad x let's call that 10 and i'm gonna do pad y i'm gonna call that 10. So that'll be 10 padding on the x axis left right and 10 padding on the y axis if i run this now you see we have 10, 10 there you can't see it, but if i reduce remove it you should see the difference you see i hope you guys can really see the difference so this that pad this one is for outer padding okay now for inner padding you have to use ipad internal padding okay that's what I just before it. I'm um, going on that. Now you can see the difference there. We have the, the 10x and the iPad X button. But you can see this already. There's a difference in this. That's for internal padding from the X and from the Y. 1010. Now we also have padding for this label. So I can do padding is equals to. Now you can either give the padding of 10. This will give it. 10 10 10 around okay as you can see we have 10 10 10 around but you can also choose to give it 5 or 10 for left and right and for top top and bottom 5 so if i run this you see 10 for left and right top and bottom 5 let me clear this okay, as you can see now let me show you something if i put we, we can in fact we can put let me come here so i'm gonna do background now we're gonna cut of course in text in this case support background yes so we're gonna put say this as blue if i run that oh yeah i, I forgot the comma here i actually thought i put it there so we're gonna do control b and you see we have the background now the color is called foreground okay foreground and i'm gonna put set that to yellow if i run it now you see with this is pad x and pad y this okay let me clear this so you can see the difference if i run this like this you see 
this part x and part y is outside it that is why we have this here if i remove this you see this is closer it is closer to our frame but if i put this back you see there's a space there now this padding is just for this text whenever whatever padding here just in for this inner text it's just this text here so i'm gonna come here to control z there so control b now we see this a little bit more space to breathe in there and that's how you add padding pattern yeah i was going to talk about the ipad so if i put ipad y change to ipad y run that i just i'm, I'm look okay let me put like this first we run that we see our ipad this is just i equal if i put this back and i change it to ipad x see this is putting space here more on the x on internal padding. you know this is internal padding that's what i'm trying to explain so this internal padding, when i say x is horizontal okay so it's adding just 10 across it like this that's why it's like this and we have ipad 10 when we use it i'm gonna maybe we get to a better scenarios when i can explain it better i'm gonna make sure i explain it really well okay now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna show you some other ways we can position our widgets so for example the anchor argument so we're gonna come here and then we're gonna do anchor so oh sorry is a configuration here okay so we're gonna put it in here so anchor and that's one place one people some people get confused so when they see things like that when they search for it they just put it in here and then it doesn't work and they get confused things, things just become complicated so just put your anchor in here now anchor use it to position text in the container just like i said so you can use different arguments so we're gonna you can use tk east west north south north east west stuff like that so if i do tk we have north dot not shift n not control so if i press control b here you see it takes it to the north so if you don't know what that is this is east here this is west here this is north here and this is south here you can just search on google the four cardinal points you see what that is so this is since this is east and this is north so if i do not you should take my text up here so if i do not east control b you see it takes my text to this corner up here i'm gonna try to put more part in here so we can see the difference um we're gonna put but i don't okay that's for external this is a year so i'm gonna increase this to 20 increase to 20. okay so this internal pattern that's why you have this internal okay well if i should put the external pattern just gonna add more to this there's just gonna be space outside the text now this is not east so if since this is check your cardinal this thing on google I might even place it on the screen somewhere right now where you are seeing it. So if I do, since this is north and this is west, if I do northwest, take it up here. So if I change it to northwest, change it up here. So, think, so Tikita is actually nice enough so that such that if you make a mistake and do north south, no, not um I'm thinking of something not possible. Let me just put not north and I do control B. You see, Tikita has no attribute N and tells you there's an error there. If I do north south, it says bad anchor. So when I see north south, no, you have north and south here. So normally we would expect to put it in the center, but Tinkita doesn't have the argument. Now if you look down here, you see we have a list, a range of arguments we can actually use. So we have north, north east, and this. So instead of using this here, so this is a constant. This one's here. You're seeing here. I'm actually using the constant from TK. You can just put them in the string. So I can do north. Run the okay. I can do so these are the ones you can use. I can do north, control B. Okay, so if you're, instead of using north south, you can use center. So you have it at the center. Now you see our internal padding. This is the so this is what I was waiting for. This is our internal padding now. It doesn't affect it here. So, so if I cancel this, I run it. You see, it looks weird. So it actually positions our text to the left. So yeah. So this is the best scenario. It positions our text to the left. Anchor. It anchors our text to the left. Now with, with our anchor at the center. You see we have our text at the center by default we only position it to the left okay i'm gonna come here so that's what anchor is not is without the focal now point now i'm gonna bring the image down now let the justify um i'll say justify is usually used mostly when you have multi-line text for example if i do this let me just put the justify in here so i'm gonna say justify if i put right and i run this as you can see our text 
okay let me clear this so it doesn't feel like this is conflicting with that so if i run this you see our text is at the left and i put justify right so justify is usually used for multiline text you have left the options are left right and center so if i give this underline and just do oh so new line and then we say hello tech Amy. so i'm gonna put this here so that that is more than 79 characters seven okay so 75 so if i run this now you see when i say justify right you see our text justify to right if i change this to left left if i run this see justify to the left uh, and this space you have in front of this is because of this space i have here okay if i do it now you see it's just perfect now if i buy center you have that at the center okay now we can use so you know our anchor doesn't actually affect and then we can use our anchor and i call our text the center as well so if i do this so look at this remember this is actually aligned to the left but justified to the center now if i anchor it to the left now see what it look like center center now i hope you guys understand how that really works now there's also something <laughs> you guys might consider funny or useful as well of course it's definitely useful the cursor types when it comes to with label so you can specify what cursor you want your text your cursor to look like whenever you over on your text so for example if i change to a cursor now we have a lot a lot i can't mention all here i'm gonna put in link in the description below you can try it out and maybe on the screen as i'm gonna mention them now um we have arrow circle color cross dot box exchange flair art we have um spider we have sizing a lot target i can't mention that of course of time so i'm gonna change this to exchange so if i run this now if i put my cursor on here you see 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 what the cursor looks like now when it's out you see this i can change this to um man so you see looks like a man <laughs> of course that's not what a man is of course what why would they call this a man that looks like a compass to me okay you also have cross and so on and so forth so that's the cursor it's it's fun you can play with it let's say you want to implement the drag and drop feature in tk then let's say you want to drag and drop something let me put that here so i, I think this is the floor so you want to drag and drop you just like this you drag it and then you drop it see how useful that can be so when you click on it it changes the cursor type you can use the configure for that and then it works so you are beginning to see some usefulness here and it's also incredible how flexible you can be with ttk let me let's have a look at configuring with square brackets so instead of using this i'm going to change remove this you can also do this with every configurations you have in here so i can just come here and do hello label and do cursor mind you you can't do this with tk i mean this tk here. you can only do this with tk okay so if i do this and I'm, let me just use track it's under cursor type if i do this you see you see that works the cursor works okay you can change whatever you want just to show you that the cursor works even while using this okay you can, so you can configure with square brackets that is it that's under flexibility so if you want to use this of course you won't, might not use this that much because you're gonna have a lot of lines it's rather you know, what i just use is so configurable you know of course you know this is possible now now that's it now let me show you how to display images so if you probably see this you might not notice this image but if you notice this this is just a png of whatsapp we're gonna add that to this so now how do we add uh what do you call it how do we add text images sorry about that now even if you want to add images you can either add uh, you can add an image with the text together or you can just have your image alone so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna add the image to this here now how do you add an image okay first of all you have to create what you call the photo image object so we're gonna do tk you can also only use tk for this so we're gonna call it whatsapp oh, the png what's png and then we're gonna do tk dot photo image now then you pass the name of your this the name of your file so let's assume you have a folder oh let me expand that okay so let's assume you have a folder in here and it's and your file is inside this so of course what you have to do is just this slash and then name of your folder and name of your files but since you have it in here you're just gonna call it right it should so that'll be what the png and you can also use okay i'm not going to talk about that i'm talking about that in a later video so the file when you mention call the file then you're gonna come here okay so if you know you can do 
hello label so let's let's be a little bit flexible come on guys so then we're gonna put what png now we just configured an image of this to be this if i run this now whoo you see the background is a png so as you can see the background is yellow is blue which is background we set for this okay but you can't see our text now do we do with text and image in the same um in the same label now we're gonna come here we're gonna come here um then we're gonna say compound so that's what we use compound to do compound is just used to position text and image together okay so it's gonna position the image relatively to the text so if i do compound of right so the text the image is gonna be at the right of the text if i run it now now you see we have our text in here back okay now notice how our widget our width um our frame has expanded it's more than normal okay so it's normal as you can see our frame is still there but of course it's more than 200 pixels just accommodate this and now so that's how i use a label to set in text and to also set images oh my goodness that was a bit long i think let me, let me spare the time okay wow I'm definitely going to cut of course that's not the full time where just some other places we have to set up where i try recording okay thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed it especially watch it last video i love you so much if you enjoyed it you should give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next epic content much love guys Peace out.